Well, the police chief is amazed. Uh, Eddie, just like a nightclub here. Uh, some people making music, others are dancing. Uh, you always make your own music, Eddie? Eddie uh, not always. I have my radio, and uh, we have records in the house and a record player. Oh. Jean-Luc wanders through the surreal scene, making faces and obscene gestures. Yeah, lewd gestures. But the police, uh, they don't seem to notice him. You people smoke too much hashish, the chief says, leaning near some hippies who are smoking a chillum. Oh, it's very bad for your health. The smoking hippies laugh at him. Uh, so, uh, good night, Eddie. Uh, carry on with your merrymaking. Hey. Well, spring fever in the Himalayas. <laughs> the red, uh, white, and yellow rhododendrons are blooming everywhere in the Himalayas, yeah. The Kathmandu season has arrived in Eddie's annual sort of migratory bird life pattern. And, uh, yeah, the go and scene's naturally winding down, water becoming scarce uh, in the pulley and bucket wells. You have barrels of water have to be transported on bullet carts. So Eddie makes his farewell speech in the crash pad and says, look, the rest, uh, the rent's paid for the rest of the month, so those who wish to stay... Go right ahead. Uh, myself, uh, I'm traveling to uh, the houseboats in Benares and then north to Kathmandu for the magnificent spring in the Himalayas. When Eddie leaves his house in the morning, his loyal camp followers walk away with him, all of them, except the demented Jean Luc who yells after the master of madness, too late, you bastard, too late. After which Jean-Luc slides down the wall, head slumps onto his chest, and drools. What's that, God is there? Eddie doesn't smoke hashish, but like everybody else does, including the uh, viewers of the performance series here, uh, you need double up down on the hashish trip. Well, hashish dens in Kathmandu? Well, by now it's Eddie's fourth trip to Nepal. 45 years old. And the year is 1969. Yeah. Well, look, at the, the India trip in, in, enchanted the counterculture uh, in the late 60s. And by 1973, more than 300,000 of us spiritually obsessed dropouts have streamed over land to India. None of us could afford a plane ticket and it'd miss all the fun anyway. Um, yeah, this demanded raw courage and uh, from the early beatniks and hippies. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, by 1969, Eddie is no longer alone. Mm -hmm. He is surrounded by kindred spirits. Yeah. These cafe society habitues uh, in Kathmandu gather in has she smoking dens? Well, they're not really dens. They're usually upstairs in kind of a bamboo thatched <laughs> cafe. But has she dens? You know. Yeah. Um. Look at in Nepal, smoking hashish ganja has never been against the law. You know, since the first fish crawled on land, never been against the law. Uh, so in Nepal, it may be hard to actually feel this, but no police hassles, no paranoia. I mean, in Kathmandu, Eddie becomes the grand master of hanging out. It's an art. 
hanging out. Refreshing change from that crash pad scene in Go. Yeah, he's just like hanging out. Uh, well, Eddie, um, he tracks down Tibetan Joe. Tibetan friend has the latest hip, hippie hangout named the Linkazar. Smoking lounge upstairs. A comfortable room where freaks play music and uh, smoke hashish and ganja. Chat about world news, maybe Eastern spirituality, the Beatles' latest music. Uh, yeah. The Linkazar at his afternoon haunt. And in the evenings, you'd find him in the cabin that had the best record player in the kingdom. Yeah. Okay. The cabin openly sells hashish. Reception counter, scales, weigh a few grams, hashish lace sweets. Masterfully designed for doing nothing for half day chunks at a time. Rock and roll music is good. And that in-house hashish, handy. Hangout joint, fun and relaxed place to loosen up and dance. 